What is up, guys? Austin and Kyle here. We are talking about CrossFit Open 22.1, uh, giving our initial thoughts on this workout. As always, there's always some sort of twist or some sort of um, you know unforeseen limitation that's going to pop up that watching two people doesn't give us a big enough sample size for. Um, so kind of take take some of this info with a grain of salt here. Um, this is our best thoughts on the first one. Um, might be able to help you guys get a little bit of a strategy going into that so you're not totally lost uh, and not kind of, you know, shitting the bed on per se on the first first attempt and having to redo it, especially if you're at a quarterfinal level and don't necessarily need to redo a workout like this. Um, so uh, 20... Austin, thanks for coming on. <laughs> yep, of course. Just had fun watching it with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so 22.1 is 15-minute MRAP, three wall walks, uh, 12 alternating dumbbell snatches, 50 and 35, and then 50 box jump overs, 24 inches for guys, 20 inches for ladies. Um, if you guys didn't watch, make sure – you, uh, if you guys didn't watch, you might have seen that there were um, some tape marks on the ground. So the tape is now being brought into the open officially and fucking more tape. <laughs> My favorite thing. Uh, so there is a setup that you guys have to have for this workout um, specific to you. Can, you it, like they're trying to make it as unified as possible, which is a good thing. Um, I just wish they had something better than tape. Uh, so box has to be a certain distance from the wall. Dumbbell has to be placed in a certain spot. Obviously there's a standard for the wall walks. There is no rebounding on the box jumps this year. Um, kind of an interesting new rule change for that. Uh, it's going to slow the workout down a little bit, um, and force you to kind of, um, breathe through the, or it's going to help you breathe through that movement a little bit more but I think it's going to also be a little bit of a different fatigue factor for a lot of people. I don't think many people practice that step down method on um, lateral box jump overs. I'm sure there are some of you out there, but um, I think for most high, most high level athletes, they don't typically practice that on lateral box jump overs. But um, so uh, we have a work warm up here for, here for you guys. Um, it is focused on opening up the uh, shoulders for those wall walks, um, focused on opening up that low back and the hips a little bit. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more on kind of what we think is the most optimal way to jump over the box, but it does involve uh, kind of some good hip mobility um and then this low back is probably going to be um come into play a lot in this workout just from going overhead in the wall walks to the dumbbell snatches to jumping over that box so um our warm-up is going to be on our instagram under our post so if you guys want to go to that to uh, view that and give it a shot before you guys hit the workout please do um, we think it's pretty, uh, pretty optimal for performing well in this workout. So, um, Austin, what were your first thoughts on this workout? Uh, first thoughts were, uh, wall walks are back. Um, <laughs> yeah. and then just kind of like, it's besides like the wall walk, which is relatively newer competitive movement. I mean, it's just standard crossfit with a dumbbell and a box yep yep so you, you don't really there's nothing heavy nothing complex you don't have to like worry you just have to run through and move for 15 minutes yeah 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 it what uh what do you think of this box jump over standard so a jump over standard i feel like is going to be a hiccup for a decent amount of people um just with like timing because as we're like starting this video too um i'm watching the ladies go through it because we just watched the guys go through it and even like daniel brandon like kind of like tripped up on one of like the steps and mm. so and had to like do an extra box jump over oh, okay um, so making sure like if you don't practice stepping down to practice beforehand um and then also too like when you guys are jumping like even just from the girls like first round to second round they both started off really high 
and now they're a lot lower in like the squat. Yeah, I th- yeah, I think that was one thing that we were kind of chatting about prior to too was if you guys look at the difference. So Noah blew up on the workout. Um, he came out at a 103 pace. Velner came out at a 109. Six seconds slower isn't doesn't seem drastic, but Velner's fall off was a 127 was his um, last round. He might have had a slower round in there. Um, I didn't do the full math on that, but his last round was the 127. Um, I'm sorry, his second to last round because he did end up finishing the workout uh, or his last round. So his second to last round was a 127. Um, Noah's slowest round was a 145. So the fall up there was pretty drastic. But one thing you guys saw could see right away in that second round um, specifically, I think kind of just based off the camera angle, was how much higher Noah's hips were relative to Velner's hips on the box jump. And then I think in like the third or fourth round, you actually see Noah start to uh, move a little bit differently on his dumbbell snatches and kind of get more of a rounded shoulder position. And when you start seeing that, it's you're trying to take over more with that lat. So that low back, you could tell, was just getting lit up more than likely from Noah um, or was one of the things he was experiencing. Um, and even when you're going up overhead in those wall walks too, that hip is moving back and forth and that's going to put a lot of pressure on that low back. Um, so yeah, sorry to your point, Austin, definitely low hips on those box jump overs. Yeah. And I mean, we kind of talked about it a little bit too, like with the scene you have, I mean, Pat went through 165 of them. If every mm-hmm. time you jump straight on, you're going to save a lot more energy than if you're trying to like laterally jump your way through this. Mm-hmm. You're laterally jumping, your hips are already going to be higher because you're not going to be set up in a good like squat position. So like it would be beneficial for everybody to actually like jump, do a 180 kind of on the box, staying low, hit your feet and then jump again. Because even like facing the box, you don't need a big load. If you're on the side and you got to you know, take that extra step back, which Noah ended up doing later on, that mm-hmm. where Pat caught him because he started taking longer on the box jumps because he was taking an extra step and you're still trying to be in that like sideways type position. Yeah. Uh, one thing that they do say in the rule book, it, uh, rule book is the athlete may jump completely over the box. So I don't know. I mean, that is definitely going to create a lot more of a power output. Um, But I do know that when, like, if your legs are getting like crazy fatigue sitting in the bottom of that rep, like Belner is, uh, that might be an option to kind of save those legs, save a little bit of time on your, on your reps. Um, But keep in mind that is going to spike your heart rate significantly. So because you're, effort level in jumping and landing in a squat compared to all the way over the box is like exponential. Exponential. Yeah. And I'm trying to, sorry for doing this on the video, but this uh, workout standard just downloaded here. Um, I don't think they have requirements on the top of the box for measurement wise either. Um, so you guys might be able to you, if you guys have them at your gym, those boxes that kind of slant up like this, you're not, there's not as much surface area on them. It might be a little bit easier to clear that box if you guys are looking at clearing it or just getting over the top of it as well. Um, so that's something. So we put a five minute e bomb of play in our um, warm up. So if you guys wanted to mess around with which box you like better, um, that, that narrower frame might be better for some people. Um, that slant in the box might be better for jumping for some people. So just something to kind of play around with there. Um, I know I'm personally, I'm going to use a, a more square, the 48 by 20 or 20 by 48, whatever they are boxes, yep. the, the traditional box um, rather than those slant box, but something you can kind of play around with if you have the option to use both at your gym. And, and I mean, just the wider facing box, if you don't plan on jumping over, you have the option to use like a wider box because then like you end in a squat, keeping your feet a little wider, it's going to be a lot more like hip dominant versus if you're like closed toed, your quads are just going to blow up and then your power from the ground and toe extension is going to limit. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I, and I, I don't foresee a lot of people using that, but just in case you do feel more comfortable on it for some reason, that is 
it looks like that is an option, but again, probably do a little bit deeper diving than um, what I just did here. Uh, okay. Um, limitations on this. What do you, what do you think the big limitations are going to be Austin? Uh, limitations would be if you're not efficient at wall walks, then this could be something that like, cause the wall walks in this workout are just something you kind of like get through. I mean, <laughs> in a, if you're a higher level athlete, you should be thinking about the wall walks, almost like a dumbbell snatch or a box. It's not something that you're worried about. You just do your reps and you move on. But if wall walks are a hiccup point, or if we haven't been practicing them, making sure like it's three reps, you're never increasing. Like last year we went like the one, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 21 or whatever. So there was like the 55 total. This stays three at a time. And Pat Belner did only 33, even though he got 11 rounds. Mm-hmm. So if you, wall walks are a struggle for you, um, going into this with almost like optimism because you're really not going to get as many as last year. Um, mm-hmm. Most people got over that like 33 point. And it's only the three at a time. So if you have yeah. like one or two and then you're starting to get fatigued after the two, just know, hey, I only have one more and then I'm going to have at least about a minute until I got to get back to the wall. Mm-hmm. You kind of like can think about your dumbbell snatch the box jump over as like your recovery point for the wall walks and try to stay as relaxed as you can and use your hips instead of using your shoulders on those dumbbell snatch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, definitely if you are limited by the wall walks, um, if that is going to be your limitation on the workout, typically this is individual with poor shoulder mobility um, or maybe not poor, but suboptimal, we'll call it yeah. <laughs> shoulder mobility. <laughs> um, that's going to be uh, kind of a limitation for you. Bigger athletes, longer athletes, this is going to be a limit, maybe might be your limitation on this workout. Um, you have to remember Noah's like um, for individuals watching, I think Noah's like five foot seven, five foot eight, Belner's five foot eight, five foot nine, five foot 10, somewhere in there. Um, so for taller athletes, this movement is significantly longer. It takes a lot more time. So I think they were hitting their wall walks in about 15 seconds, 15 to 20 seconds, I think. Yeah, maybe right about there. there. Um, so it, it, it could take, you might be on time under tension a lot longer on those wall walks. If you are a taller, bigger athlete, um, don't have the rhythm of that three step down. Um, so that's kind of something to keep in mind. Um, one thing I was seeing was, or, or thinking was, uh, if you are not worried about the wall walks, if they are something where it's just three, you can bang them out in 12 to 15 seconds. Not, not a problem. This now becomes a dumbbell snatch and a box jump over workout where we're kind of talking about before is finding that rhythm on the box um it appears this is only a sample size of two um i'm assuming that the girls are doing the same thing as you're watching the girls austin the jump turn around it appears that that is the best rhythm on the box um one thing i think that you're going to want to pay attention to though when doing this is stepping down close to the box um so no i think did start to kind of do that turnaround method but his steps were significantly further away from the box than valner so valner was almost stepping down like in line with the box and allowed him to just touch and jump right back up where noah kind of had to gather himself look at where it was obviously some fatigue was playing into this but it makes his jump that much further than what Belner has to do. So Noah now has to cover distance horizontally and vertically where Belner just has to cover more distance vertically versus horizontally. So uh, something to think about too, when you're, when you're practicing these is trying to get that rhythm of just almost grazing that toe off the top of the box and coming down right in front of that box. Yeah. And I mean, they're, Girl, both of them are facing the box, doing their turn right now and just watching that. And then kind of like the one thing I was thinking as you were talking there, like when you guys are doing these box jumps, like keep your whole body relaxed. Like you don't need a really big arm swing because that's just more energy like output. Like this isn't a tall box. We're not jumping on 30, 24, 36, 30 or anything like that. So just use like enough effort to make sure you land on top. And that's all you need to do. You don't have to jump four inches taller than what the box is. You just have to land on top. So think about like minimal effort to get your feet on top and then try to keep like upper body relaxed. 
because you don't need a big arm swing. You're not doing a max height box jump every time you do this. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. Pacing strategies. What would you say a good kind of pacing strategy would be for somebody who's just kind of looking to crack that top 10%? Uh, pacing strategy, I would say from your very like get go, uh, try to stay just a little under like two minutes. So you think it may be like, I mean, uh, Noah fell off to like a 145, which we were like, oh, he really fell off. But a 145 for most people is going to be a great time to hang on to. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you could be like a minute 45 or so, by the time you hit seven rounds, you've already bought yourself like another round. Mm-hmm. And so then you're looking at like your eight, nine rounds, which should be enough to crack you into like that top 10%. And then even doing like a minute 45 right off the get go, you might feel like you're moving too slow but you should, you're going to get a lot of rounds on this. So you don't want to feel bad on round one. Yeah. That, that minute 45 pace is a little bit over eight rounds. So I think that's going to be a pretty solid that I think that eight round range is going to crack that. I think it's going to crack the top 10% for this workout. Um, Might be a little bit lower, uh, but you also have to keep in mind as we have, up to two more workouts, potentially three more workouts. So that's yeah. also something to keep in mind is we had several people last year that weren't inside of the top 10 after the first workout, but it's always going to balance itself out. So just floating around that top 10%, I think is going to be around that eight, uh, eight yeah. round mark. Um, but if, if you're not at that, it's not the end of the world. Keep that in mind. Like there's still room to make up ground in the next two workouts. So, yeah. And I mean, every, if your goal should be, okay, I got to finish eight. And if I can get one wall, wall walk into nine or something like that, just get a couple of reps. Mm-hmm. You're generally I'm feeling like you'll be okay. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. What are you thinking for an individual who, uh, is probably going to sneak into the top 10% relatively easy, pretty much one and done on all open workouts. Um, as far as strategy, things like that for this one. Yeah. Yeah. Pacing strategy. Um, pacing strategy. I would say like whatever your, uh, strengths or weaknesses are depending on like movement. Like if you know, like hinging over and over and over just like guys your heart rate or anything your dumbbell snatches like maybe take a bigger breath at the top just so you can keep your wall walks and box jumps fast because the the dumbbell snatch is really one of the only opportunities you get to breathe because the box jumps you guys stay like relatively quick but if you take an extra half a second just to from a dumbbell snatch that could be enough to kind of reset you to where you can stay at like a good pace Yep. But I mean, like none of these movements are that crazy to where I think anybody who is comfortably going to make top 10%, they shouldn't necessarily be worried. They should just go out and do their 15 minute AMRAP and be happy with it. Yep. Yep. And obviously we saw elites, elite times there. Um, uh, there is a possibility that somebody, uh, you know, Velner was right at 11 rounds. I think probably top scores are going to crack somewhere in the 12. Um, you're going to have some, you know, shorter individual that's just, great day for <laughs> for conditioning and just smashes this workout so yep. uh, there's probably somebody that's going to be kind of in that 12 rep mark um maybe a little bit further than that what are what are the girls at right now um watching it's at 14 27 daniel brandon's going to be pretty close to pat Vellner. i mean they're basically neck and neck yeah pat Vellner ended up at 33 30 Okay. Um, she has 20 seconds left and she's at 326. Okay. So she'll be a little bit over 11, somewhere in that 12th round, probably. If she gets this one, she has 10 seconds. She's just getting down. There's one. And here's two. So she got two wall walks into the 12th. Okay. Yeah. So you might like, we always see the open workouts are kind of like a good ballpark for, um, you know, where, uh, kind of like the semifinal level is, if that makes sense. Um, there's always somebody that comes in and just great freaking day and in their home gym comfortable and just smashes the workout. So, um, but yeah, I mean, big thing guys is like, we're just looking for, for, 
those of you that are just looking to move on to quarterfinals, just cracking that top 10%, which I think is around a minute 45 for the, for, um, for each round. Uh, if you can obviously push it a little bit faster than that we saw from Noah, don't, don't blow up. <laughs> um, I think that jump up step down method that Valner does is, is key to this workout um, and consistent movements, quicker transitions on this workout. This is, this is one of these workouts where transitions can really come into play, especially if you're taking a lot of time between your box jump reps. Um, that is also considered a transition time. So make sure you guys are moving on those pretty quick. So I would also, uh, yeah. something I just thought about too, um, if it helps anybody who's like, say a general gym goer, they're doing like Friday night lights or doing any type of like open comp, like in-house say like, cause you're not worried about top 10% or maximizing time. You should just stay relaxed on this workout. Like you're moving for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. If you ever feel like you're kind of like anxiety levels rising or you're finding it hard to breathe, you're moving too fast, slow down yeah. a little bit. Cause as soon as you have to take breaks, you're going to be like screwing yourself. So like slow and steady, and then you'll get the job done because none of these movements, you have the potential of really like failing. Yeah. Yeah. One thing you could do with that. So to, sorry to caveat off of that is um, in your warm ups, guys, you could do a full round, just nasal breathing only. Um, so not ever getting to the point where you want to breathe out of your mouth, but comfortably breathing through that nose figure out what that time is. So maybe it's a minute 30, 45, two minutes, 210, whatever. And that's a pretty aerobic pace that you guys should be able to sustain for duration. So somewhere around there, whatever that time is, is something that you can probably maintain for 15 minutes. If you're, if you are getting as much oxygen in and breathing through your mouth as well. Yes. <laughs> Don't nasal breathe don't, during don't the nasal breathe the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> so do that in practice before the actual, <laughs> the yeah. actual. Event. Otherwise you're going to set yourself up for failure. If you do your first round like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, cool. Any other, any other closing thoughts, Austin or. No, nah, just go out and crush it. It's a 15 yep. minute AMRAP. Go have fun with it. That's really yeah. it. <laughs> Yep. Sweet, sweet. Um, well, good luck, guys. Make sure you uh, keep an eye out for our um, warm up on our Instagram account. And then, um, yeah, post your scores to the comments. Like, let us know how it goes. And we'll, uh, we'll catch you guys next week.